Hi there. Today we're going to be going over the new patch live letter that just dropped. Thank you, Mr. Yoshi P for our new patch update. There is so much information and so many things coming to patch 6.2 and beyond. Not everything's dropping right at patch 6.2, but um, we're getting a lot of stuff. So I am using a Reddit post here by S'more of Babylon. They kind of compiled everything. Uh, I feel like it's just a little bit safer than using the slides, so then we can keep this spoiler free for all the players who don't want to be spoiled about it. There are a few things that you're going to hear, but you're not going to know what they are anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it until you get to the end of the game. You won't even remember. So uh, let's just go over it. There's just so much information. Looks like 6.2 is for late August, a long time, so probably the 23rd or the 30th. It's usually near the end or middle of the month. Um, we're getting new MSQ, of course, and a new dungeon, which I won't say the name, and luckily it's blocked out here. We're getting our new tier of Pandemonium raids. There is going to be a week delay from Savage content, so the normal one's going to drop right on 6.2. The Savage version of that is going to drop a week after. So many people that I've read in Reddit and my Discord are stoked for that because now it actually gives you time to play the MSQ and to get ready for Savage. The only thing that's going to matter is if crafted gear is going to drop on 6.2 the day of because usually a lot of people get commissioned to do um crafted gear right when the raid drops because people are trying to go for worlds first and that kind of stuff and so that could actually hurt the crafters um who usually get commissioned if the crafted gear drops on 6.2 if it's delayed with the savage then um then it won't it won't have an effect but if it if it doesn't, then that will actually hurt the crafters who make millions of dollars doing that. Millions of gil. This is not going to be a thing they're going to keep. They're just testing it to see how it works. I think it's a great idea because that's also going to help with queue times because they want to avoid what happened in Endwalker where no one could get in the game. No one could play. You're literally waiting like 8,000 or whatever, 3,000 people in queue in order to get into Final Fantasy to play. And so they're going to avoid that at all costs. Continuation of Totaro's Grand Endeavor um, will require a Heaven's Ward Alliance raid quest line. Continuation of Hildebrand quest. And <laughs> if you have not heard... Our new relic weapons apparently, allegedly, are going to be the Manderville weapons. So Hildebrand is just a side quest. It's not a main quest story at all. It's completely side story. But now, it, it depends how it plays out. There's been like conflicting things about it. You have to complete all of the Hildebrand quests, A Realm Reborn, Heaven's Ward, Stormblood, um, so on and so forth, in order to get access to the Manderville weapons. And I've seen some discussion about it on Reddit um, that they're going to make it like kind of separate. But I so right now you need to complete them um, from what we know. We get another patch closer to 6.2 drop. So we'll know a little bit more in that time. We won't have any filled zones at this time like we have um, Eureka and Boja. I still think they could still come. Um, Boja didn't drop until 6.35. So there's still a potential that we're going to get a field zone, but it looks like it's just not going to be connected to our relic weapons or quest weapons is how they're referring to it. We're getting a new tribe quest. I'm going to have that like little blocked out right there. Um, it, for anyone at the very last, uh, the very last part in the very last section of the game, uh, gathering tribe quest, which is great because we're sad because a lot of us thought it was going to be our little love people. You know what I'm talking about? Mr. Ways, if I could. But now that we know it's not going to be that, that's cool because then that means that those little peoples might be a crafting beast tribe quest or tribal quest, which I would love. I love the crafting tribal quests. I think they're so much fun and the stories are really good usually. Not that the others aren't, but I feel like crafting has... Um, I like crafting, so so this one's going to be a gathering. I'm not the biggest fan of gathering <laughs> or tribe quests. It's taken me forever to complete the gathering one, so. But I'm going to do it from the start so I can just get it done and get it over with. We'll get more uh, Endwalker Trial series, begins in 6.2. New Unreal Trial, that's going to be Containment Bay uh, S1T7. For all the people who do Unreal Trials, um, the only thing I've seen about that is people just want the change of rewards from Fox Hollows 
we're getting a glamour dresser capacity increased from 400 to 800 holy crap we're gonna have so much room he had made a comment though yoshibi made a comment that okay we're gonna do this but in three months you guys are gonna be complaining again that you have no space <laughs> so i'm i'm happy i i'm close i'm like 350 but i can get rid of a lot of stuff that i don't use that i thought i would use but it's just sitting there so i have to go through and clean it out we're getting our new high-end crafted combat gear um that's usually we get that anyway when a savage tier comes out so crafted gear will be something like 610. The new tombstones, which they'll talk about here, will be around 620. And then savage content gear will be around item level 630. Players can request repairs from other players, both outside and inside of duties. Now, I didn't really understand like uh, where this came from. I've never had to suffer with people not having repaired gear, but I play with a small group of people <laughs> who are pretty like on top of it. But when you're doing savage content, apparently some people could be like, oh, sorry guys, totally forgot to like repair my gear. And so now we have to do all of our phases over again because they're not doing any damage because their gear's broken. So now other people can repair gear for you. And you know, I repair all my own gear with crafting and it's totally worth it if you're not doing that instead of going to the menders. More materials can be attained via ethereal reduction. So apparently we're getting new materials that are not combat related. So usually we get our regular sands and crystals, but we're getting some that are not combat related. So they'll probably be glamour related so that's pretty exciting uh, just more things for what we're already doing anyway uh, order of certain quests in return of Ivalis, which is the stormblood alliance raids will be adjusted so they're gonna looks like they're gonna move around some stuff the adventure plates and portrait systems are being adjusted to be less confusing i could not get my freaking portrait plate to work for the life of me no matter what i did i like marked it to this saved it to that adjusted it to this it's a really cute one but i just can't seem to get it to work and to show up when i'm doing like crystal conflict so so glad they're redoing this because it's so incredibly irritating to have like uh to not be able to see the portrait you made we're getting a new tombstone as well along with the new raid tier this is the tombstones of casualty casual ca causality whoa is it causality or casualty? Well, well, I'm sure one of you will correct me in the comments. What this means is that our aphorism tombstones that are end game ones right now are going to go up to 2000. You're not going to be able to get astronomies anymore. Those are going to move to like the back end to where then you can turn those in for aphorisms. And then causality is going to go to 450. So they're just going to do like a little switcheroo. Anything that was tombstones of astronomy are going to go over to the hunt vendor for exchangeable for sack of nuts so those things don't go away you would just be able to attain them um through the sack of nuts job adjustments we're having some tweaks for pve and pvp and unfortunately unfortunately dragoon and astro's rework is going to be postponed dragoon i honestly don't think it needs as much of a rework i really like dragoon a lot astrologian it needs a little bit of a button um you know we need to condense some of those buttons because whew, there i can't even get rescue on my bar <laughs> i can't get rescue and believe me you actually use that one quite a bit as a healer so that's unfortunate but you know they said they were gonna try and they they couldn't get to it there's just so much content they're also going to rework how critical and determination work uh, i'm assuming as a stat because they had adjusted Samurai back in an old, um, uh, earlier patch that does a direct or does direct critical damage. So buffs and debuffs were not affecting it correctly. And I think we're lowering the DPS of it. So they're going to change how that's going to work in 6.2, which is great. Um, I know a lot of people weren't a big fan of the direct critical hit being added because then it kind of kills, it baselines the amount of DPS you can do. PVP, Crystalline Conflict will begin after 6.18 on July 5th. That is exciting. Uh, this is not the reward track and cool new armor that's the pvp series that's resetting in 6.2 so it's still all the same stuff but the new season is starting over we're getting more duty support added to so 6.2 snow cloak keeper of the lake psalm all the airy in the vault uh while they're doing this they are also reworking those dungeons so some of these dungeons are going to run a little smoother some of the mechanics are going to change and i'm all for it because they've been doing a great job thus far yusail Estinian, and alphanod will be support npcs steps of faith 
thank God this is the one in Heaven's Ward. You'll know it if you see this. You're basically underneath a gigantic figure. I'm not going to say, um, but it's going to go into Cape Westwind. So it's going to turn into a solo duty. Thank the Lord, because doing that is so annoying when you get it in trial. <laughs> um, Thorn March Hard is going to get revamped. I don't understand what they're going to revamp. It's not necessarily difficult. It's just confusing. So hopefully they just like demystify it instead of actually make it easier because I don't think it's that hard. But at first you're kind of like, if you just had queued into it, you're like, what do, what do I do? You know what I mean? You don't really know unless there's someone there to tell you. Variant in Criterion Dungeons. So these are basically, they're not going to replace deep dungeons, but these are basically, which I'm really, really excited about, your opportunity to do regular content, variable content, and savage content in a four-man dungeon. So you're going to be going pretty much into a dungeon and you're going to have an NPC with you. They don't say who, just said someone who talks a lot. That could honestly be anyone in the game. So uh, we'll see who it is. But there's going to be no role restrictions for the casual part. So that's going to uh, the Sildal subterrain. That's just going to be like, it's kind of going to be similar, I think, to Palace of the Dead for the first one. That's not harder. Then the Criterion Dungeon is going to be a higher difficulty these are going to be fixed dungeon rolls. Even Yoshi P referred to these as being extreme and savage difficulty. So if you can think about that, but scale down to four people instead of eight. The great thing about it is you don't need as many people to do fun content. Oh, I'm shaking. Sorry. You don't need as many people to run fun content. I like extreme and savage content. I don't play it often or really ever. And that's because I'm playing with seven other people and it's kind of hard to... Um, schedule for me personally but here I can probably easily get three people scheduled for a dungeon run that's extreme or savage I'm interested about the rewards too I'm, I'm excited for this this is going to be really good this isn't replacing palace of the dead though we're still going to get another deep dungeon like palace of the dead heaven on high later down the later down though you guys island sanctuary is finally here and it's getting very mixed reviews like it's not going well and it's going amazing it basically sounds like it's going to be a mixture of animal crossing and pokemon if that makes sense it's going to be added in 6.25 so that's not going to be uh like what two or three weeks after august so september so probably end of september or so every player is going to get their own island now the i don't know if they actually talked about if you have to complete a certain msq to get your own island or if it's going to be like a level 15 thing like a lot of events once you're level 15 you can do so i don't know if they're going to make it like that you're going to have a separate inventory it's going to be casual solo play for gathering and crafting but you don't need a crafter or gather experience needed so it's going to be kind of a separate thing i think caring for animals building facilities and more they actually refer to it in the live letter as base building which gets me excited i love base building games starcraft um warcraft i love those type of games so if it's like that i'm all in i like animal crossing too so i think i think it's going to be good for my type of play and it'll give me something to do when i don't have anything else to do or don't want to actually work on stuff and just want to like casual play materials gathered on the island are only going to be used for content there so it's not going to go over into like your actual gameplay in final fantasy special tools can be crafted to gather resources more efficiently you can collect creatures and add them to your farm this is what made me think of pokemon rare and unique variations of these creatures can be found like it sounds like shiny hunting or like shinies to me um so that's gonna take up all my time <laughs> you can grow island specific crops these are not going to be the same as a state crop so a lot of people are happy about that because they're worried about their thovnarian onion uh, which is what you use to rank up the chocobo. They're worried about that market board because they sell for like 150 to 500k sometimes. That's not going to affect it. You can build a base of operations and customize its appearance functionality to some degree. This is not a house though. So it's not here to so solve the housing market. 
which I think a lot of people are going to be bummed about because basically that's what I think a lot of people thought it was going to be me, myself included. Minions can be placed at your base and wander around freely. I love that. I have some favorite minions that I can't wait to like just let roam free on the island. You can invite friends. You'll unlock flying and mount speed as you explore the island more. Um, an orchestration like thing can be added so then you can play <clears throat> a certain soundtrack while you're in the island which i think i'm going to be playing in the balance here pretty often at my island just like dun, 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 you know what i mean we'll get more of that in 6.2 and then the rest is just like um maintenance and stuff like that so all in all we have so much stuff coming and that's just like in a month a month and a half it feels so much later like it doesn't feel like july already so uh, we're looking forward to it. We're going to be having lots of fun here. I'm super stoked for the Criterion Dungeons, for the Island Sanctuaries. I'll probably be live streaming a lot of that because I am just, I'm really excited. I like Animal Crossing and I usually have to log off for Final Fantasy to go play Animal Crossing or something like that. Stardew Valley or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Let me know how you feel about the Mandervale weapons. I don't think a lot of people are excited about that. I think a lot of people are not excited that you have to do that content, side content, which some some you do some you have to do side content already for the relic weapons it's not like main story quest stuff but most of the manderville stuff is cutscene. and if you're just not into that kind of humor i personally enjoy it but if you're not into it then that could be pretty deterring you know um i don't do relics often anyway so i have a lot of other stuff to do in game but that is our live letter there is so much stuff that i also wanted to mention is that they're reorganizing the actions and traits window there's a few other things that i didn't mention but they're real small but they're organizing the actions and traits windows to show you the combos so if you type right now in your job name and guide in final fantasy 14 you'll see the official guide of final fantasy 14 if you scroll at the bottom of like let's say paladin it shows you the combo on the website like the base combo of just the three gcd tier combo and they're gonna adjust it like that in game you won't be stuck to this you can change it back and forth um, but i think that's gonna be really good for new players so then they see like oh i'm supposed to use this ability this ability and this ability which is already pretty straightforward because it glows in a yellow circle but sometimes people need a little more help and i think that's what they're really it looks like they're moving this towards a lot more solo play um, like being able to do the dungeons on your own, being able to understand jobs without people telling you, because usually that was up to the players. We would have to tell you in dungeons. So um, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty exciting and uh, looking forward to it. I have so much stuff to do today. I am getting married in Final Fantasy 14. I will be streaming that later. So um, I'm going to see a lot of you guys later anyway. <laughs> Just lots of stuff to get done. So uh, I hope that this live letter finds you well and you're doing well in this world and I will see you later today and if not you can watch more Final Fantasy guides and tutorials if you click here.